After the Second World War, a number of war criminals who took part in the Nazi crimes against humanity were brought to justice. A large number of the SS did flee, but as the years progressed, the stories of barbarism and horror were told by the survivors of the Holocaust, and these helped to lead to the capture of some of the perpetrators. One of the most shocking parts of the Holocaust was the fact that the Nazis were routined in their mass extermination, and were focused on efficiently massacring a whole part of the world's population. It is through the leadership schemes put in place at camps such as Auschwitz were able to function, but today we look at the execution of one man who did try to evade capture after the war came to an end. Fritz Søren is remembered today as a commandant of Ravensbrück concentration camp and as an evil member of the Nazi party. So join us today as we look at the justified execution of Fritz Søren, the Commandant of Ravensbrück, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. However, before we begin, I'd like to talk about today's sponsor NordVPN. Many of my viewers enjoy watching historical documentaries and films, and NordVPN can allow you to access movies, television series and documentaries all around the world, simply by changing how your location appears. This allows you to unlock Netflix libraries and catalogues from all around the world from within the comfort of your own home. Also, many of my viewers enjoy researching different topics, and NordVPN can allow you to access educational materials that sometimes can be annoyingly restricted behind a limit on how many articles you can read per day. With NordVPN this would not be an issue, and you can access educational resources from all around the world which I found useful when researching for my videos. It is extremely easy to use and your data also remains safe encrypted behind the virtual private network of the VPN. This allows you to stay private online and ensures your digital footprint is secure and safe. It is available in 59 different countries and is incredibly fast, being the quickest VPN provider out there today. NordVPN is also available on every major platform such as Windows, Mac OS and even Android TVs. So don't hesitate today. Go to nordvpn.com forward slash the untold past, linked below in the description, or use my code the untold past at checkout to get a two year plan plus a bonus gift with a huge discount. Fritz Søren was born on the 10th of June 1908, being the son of a textile merchant. After his schooling, he began training to be a businessman, however, he was also trained as a decorator. He worked in a cotton mill, however, the economic situation in Germany was not good at the time. Inflation and subsequent financial problems caused huge job losses, and Søren was a casualty of this. He had been exposed to the politics of the Nazi party for a number of years, and he supported Hitler's ideas and ideologies, becoming a member of the SA, Hitler's brown shirts in October 1928, and in the same year he became a fully paid up member of the Nazi party. In 1931 he transferred from the SA to the SS, and worked as a local leader of the SS, However, by 1934, he had gained full-time employment within the organisation. Within the SS, Fritz Søren rose throughout different ranks and roles, and he performed different military exercises with the Wehrmacht, and was held as an officer in reserve. During his leadership of SS divisions, his leadership was criticised, but after the Anschluss of Austria, he remained a staff leader within the group. It was decided that Søren should not embark on a career within the military, but should remain within the administration of the evil organisation. On April 1st, 1941, Søren was deployed within the Sachsenhausen concentration camp, which was the first large concentration camp complex planned by the SS. It was planned for the camp to be expandable and to meet the needs of the Nazis, and during its operation around 200,000 prisoners were transported there. Fritz Søren went into Sachsenhausen blind with no experience of how concentration camps ran. At the camp he met with Harry Neuerjox, a prisoner who had been high up in the Communist Party of Germany, who had been appointed a camp elder. Søren relied on Neuerjox for information within the camp, and he rose up the hierarchy of the camp's administration. During his first few days there, he delved into the camp's statistics, and Neuerjox showed him around. Søren intimidated the elder of the camp, hoping that his message would pass on to the rest of the inmates. He would later try and force New York's to execute a prisoner who had been selected to die on the gallows, but New York's refused and was forced to stand beside the gallows when this execution took place. It's clear that he was a brutal man who had a thirst for violence even when he first entered a concentration camp. 
the Action T4 programme was carried out at Sachsenhausen, and while Surin was there, many prisoners were transported from the camp to undergo horrific murders and executions. As Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa, the prisoners learned of an SS plot to murder the Soviet prisoners of war held there, and Surin was placed in charge of the killing of the prisoners. The SS bloc leaders, who were supposed to shoot the prisoners, were divided up by Surin, and he was even involved in the shootings himself. In the following weeks, at least 6,500 POWs were shot, and the number rose to around 13,000. Around 5,000 prisoners were also killed by the camp's conditions. Surin eventually rose to the rank of Deputy Commandant at Sachsenhausen, but it was a promotion that saw him enter a different camp to continue his reign of terror. On September 1st, 1942, Fritz Surin was transferred to Ravensbrück concentration camp and served as the camp's commandant. Upon taking command, his policy was to exterminate and kill as many prisoners as possible by working them as hard and feeding them as little until they died. Ravensbrück was a female camp where a large amount of women were killed during the Holocaust and it was under the leadership of Surin that this did occur. The number of inmates inside the camp rose heavily during his leadership and it's estimated that a total of 132,000 women were held captive at Ravensbrück under Surin's leadership with 30,000 of them being killed. Surin was a brutal commandant who was responsible for the mass executions of thousands of prisoners before the end of the Second World War occurred. Surin also was involved in providing SS Dr Karl Gebhardt with inmates for his sadistic experiments. Initially he objected as the inmates were political prisoners but the SS command overruled him and he was forced to apologise to Gebhardt and had to supply him with prisoners. Gebhardt's experiments consisted of horrific transplants where people's legs were transplanted onto amputees and using x-ray machines to make women inside the camp sterile. These experiments were sadistic and often resulted in the patients being killed for autopsies but it was under Surin's control that these occurred. At the end of 1944 at Ravensbrück, resistance fighters were also kept in a separate block. At the time the normal execution staff had been transferred to fight onto the front lines so executions were carried out by the remaining guards and Surin. More experiments took place, as well as massacres of the resistance fighters, and more killings were planned. Surin faced resistance from Polish women in particular, who were subject to medical trials, and during one roll call, all of the lights in the camp went out, and those Polish women hid out in different areas of the camp. As the Second World War was coming to an end, Fritz Surin tried to escape the camp, and he did succeed for a while. He was asked to accompany a convoy of women to leave the camp, but decided to go on the run. However, he decided to drive a Det Samson, a British SOE agent in his Mercedes, to a local United States base, hoping that by handing her over it would save him. Surin believed she was Winston Churchill's niece, as she was going under a false name. At some point he then fled, and managed to escape being brought to justice for a few years. He arrived in Bavaria in November 1946, and then travelled between different German cities. He was arrested for a final time in March 1949, and he was found to have stolen many valuables from prisoners inside the camp, for example rings, watches, jewellery, and even gold teeth. Whilst being held in US custody, Fritz Surin denied any crimes he was accused of. His identity was confirmed, and he denied everything that was put in front of him, including the testimony of many different witnesses. At trial he was frustrating the prosecutors, using dismissive rhetoric such as I declare this statement invalid, and he decided to attack former prisoners who testified against him to try and intimidate them to make them look unreliable. Eventually Fritz Surin was found guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity, and he was sentenced to death in June 1950. This was a good five years after the Second World War in Europe had ended. He was executed by a French firing squad allegedly, and very few details of his death have survived. One newspaper reported, Fritz Surin, the former commander, along with Hans Flaum, a former work commander of Ravensbrück concentration camp, were executed yesterday by a French firing squad. The two Germans were convicted by a French court of crimes against humanity at Ravensbrück, including the deaths of several inmates. At the age of 42, on the 12th of June 1950 in Baden-Baden in Germany, Fritz Surin was led out to a courtyard where he faced his fate. 
a number of French soldiers were lined up to perform his execution. Usually executions of Nazis post-war were conducted by hangings, so Surin's execution does seem rather different in that respect. Within minutes of him entering the courtyard where he was executed, he was dead with the firing squad effectively doing their duty. Fritz Surin was a brutal man and barbaric leader within the concentration camp system. It's fair to say that he must have taken pride in the suffering he inflicted on prisoners inside of the camps. He was a man who oversaw the deaths of thousands of people inside one of the worst hells on earth. Fritz Surin brutally ruled over Ravensbrück in particular and instigated a reign of terror in which thousands paid with their lives. Eventually facing a French foreign squad, he faced his justice. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.